Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, super interesting video today. We're going to check out Dan Bilzerian on the PBD podcast debating Israel and the occupation of Palestine. And moreover, Dan Bilzerian will talk about Islam briefly as well, and if he would potentially convert or not. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Recently, you know, when I watch some of your tweets, I, I don't know if you've announced this or not. I don't know if you've joined APAC. I don't know if you are, you know, <laughs> you know, if you are an advisor for them. Let me read some of these tweets. You know, uh, uh, Muslims aren't the problem. The open borders and motherfuckers and the media attacking nationalism, pushing DEI, transgenderism, and destroying moral values are the problem. August 4th. If you don't put America first as a U.S. politician, you are committing treason. Supporting Israel True. is bad for America. Netanyahu is a convicted war criminal and Israel is not our ally. We fought way too many wars for Israel and we certainly don't need to give them any more money. July 25th. Very basic. These idiots have ruined movies. Everything they put out is literally propaganda. And then all mm. of a sudden we got scripture here. For what shall it profit? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Is this recent you know, comments you're making about Israel a recent thing, or have you always had these beliefs? It's more recent. I, I didn't really realize what a problem it was until recently, and then... Yeah, it's actually quite amazing to see the Zionistic plan backfiring onto them, because during the time of COVID, many people had a lot of time on their hands, and they started doing independent research. And once they looked into it, they actually found out what kind of state Israel is, what kind of history it has, and what kind of atrocities they're imposing onto the Palestinians. And then when October 7th happened, people were actually not too easily swayed to jump on the side of Israel and defend Israel and tell them, yes, you are the eternal victim after all. Everybody was scared to say something about it. My brother told me, yes. like, you know, you can't say anything about it. They'll fucking kill you. Like everybody... True basically said that I couldn't say anything about it. And actually- Yeah, and this is absolutely important to understand. Of course, if you want to understand who rules you, just look into who you cannot critique. And this holds true when you're talking about the Zionists. Now they're like, literally like trying to like kick me off the board of my company because of those tweets. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I've definitely had a lot of like negative pushback, a lot of my Jewish friends, but I don't give a fuck. You know, it's like one of those things where Amazing, I, I know that it's the right Kudos. thing. And the fact that everybody else is scared to say it, makes me, you know, feel obligated to be vocal about it. Why do you think it's the right thing? Because I know that they're a fucking parasite. Like they provide Ooh. the U.S. absolutely no value. They've done so many Dangerous things that you know, would constitute, nice. um, you know, an act of war against us. I mean, USS Liberty, Lebanon Affair, I mean, it can go on and on and on and on and on. Um, but, you know, I, I think they knew about 9-11. Um, I think they had JFK assassinated. The first thing that he wanted to do, you know, right before he died was, you know, make APAC a foreign entity mm -hmm. um, and not allow them to have nukes. And then all of a sudden this fucking guy's dead and Jack Ruby, who is Jack Rubenstein, you know? I mean, it's just like, <laughs> it, it, like and then- Okay, basically Dan Bolzerian said everything that I was trying to communicate over the past two to three years here on my channel, but- yeah, you usually get absolutely censored addressing such topics. So I'm really impressed that the PBD podcast here is broadcasting this and that they were able to get away with it. You just, I don't know, man. I, I can't ignore all the shit that they've done. They sold our secrets. Netanyahu lied to us about weapons of mass destruction. We fought all these fucking wars. My friends have died over there. Yes. Like, you know, and I, I just look at what they provided us with and it's fucking... It's, it's not nothing. It's like a negative, you know, it's not, even if they just didn't do jack shit, that would be, you know, bad, but they've <laughs> actually done things to hurt us over and over and over again. So like this exactly. whole thing of they're our greatest allies, just complete fucking bullshit. And, you know, we send them a hundred billion dollars, then they send APAC a hundred million dollars, and then they distribute it to our politicians and every politician is a little fucking APAC handler walking around and telling them what to fucking say and how to vote. And it's just like, look, I've donated like a hundred grand to politicians. You know, and they call me up like, hey, you need anything? Like every week. I don't need shit. I fucking sit on my ass. I don't do anything. I don't care. I don't fucking break any laws. I don't need any favors. Like I just gave it to them because I didn't want to see any more fucking mm -hmm. retard, you know, Democrats in there. So, um, you know, but that's a hundred thousand. Like what does a hundred million buy you? How many fucking phone calls do those guys get? You know? And so 
Like, I just know how it works. And the system is broken. Like these people get in office and they don't have very much money and they get out of office with fucking tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. It's not a fucking accident, yes. right? Is, is that an Israel thing or is that anybody? Because China is doing the same thing. China it doesn't Iran have, their, they don't the have an APAC. Thing. Like Israel is the only one that has a fucking, like a lobby in the US fucking, you know, giving these politicians money. Okay, no, every yeah, quick interjection for people that don't know what APEC is, as Dan said correctly here, China doesn't have a seat in the government of the US. If you look into what APEC means, APEC is the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. I mean, just think about this word that such a thing exists in the first place, right? American Israel Public Affairs Committee. Is there an American Chinese Public Affairs Committee? Of course not. This is probably why Dan chose the terminology parasite, of course, because you have an entity within your government that dictates pro-Israel policies from within. Founded in 1951, which is of course a very convenient date, if you know what I mean, APEC aims to strengthen the relationship between the US and Israel by influencing US foreign policy in favor of Israel. It does this by lobbying members of Congress, educating lawmakers, <laughs> educating, quote unquote, and engaging in grassroots advocacy to promote policies that it views as beneficial to both countries. Yes, of course, to both countries. Critiques of APEC argue that its influence can lead to US foreign policy decisions that disproportionately favor Israel, while supporters see it as an essential for ensuring a strong US Israel alliance for whatever reason. Anyways, it is exactly those foreign policies then that America implemented and went to war against Arab nations. The Arab became the enemy, Muslims are the enemy, and Israel is our greatest ally. The country, the big ones all have lobbyists. They, they all have lobbying that they're doing. Not in the US. They're registered as foreign entities. Right. I mean, if you're talking about, are you going to the dual citizenship part with, yeah. Israel, you know, Israel? That's another trick. problem is, is a lot of our politicians have far more allegiance to Israel than they do the United States. I mean, that's a whole other issue as well. Do you well. know why they did, they did the dual citizenship? Do you know the history behind why they did the dual citizenship? What do you mean? Like, so the whole concept of dual citizenship was because when Israel became a, you know, country again, they didn't want the people again. from here who wanted to go oh, back to Israel again that they didn't have a motivation a to go if they were going to lose their citizenship here. So that was the reason why they did it. It was kind of like, okay, uh, you're your own country. We kind of need some of you guys to move over there to help the country out. Yeah, but I'm not going to go. Why are you not going to go? Am I going to lose my citizenship here? But you kind of, you are. I mean, we don't do that. Every other country, you got to, I don't want to lose my citizenship. Well, okay, how about if we do this? How about if we allow you just we Israel do whatever to go back to your to country, you won't lose your citizenship. That was the <laughs> arrangement at the beginning why they did it that way. No, look, I get it. I have yeah. three citizenships. You know what I mean? I think it's okay. I, I think the Where's the third one? I know Armenia, but um, the St. Kitts. Okay, got it. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't have an issue with dual citizenship. My issue is when somebody is holding a U.S. office and they are putting a foreign nation's interest before America's interest. And they are favoring that other country, and so that to me is treason. Like when you are Christian values, a man. U.S. government official, your motivation should be to do things in the best interest of the government that you are representing, not 100%. some other fucking foreign Absolutely. country. It's very and that's the problem. Ideological. Okay, so but, never but, but go through it. So what is the solution? Meaning, uh, <laughs> if Israel's the enemy, then if if it, let's just say you don't do anything. And everybody in the Middle East unites to take out Israel. Do you think the Middle East world is heaven. better without Israel? And do you think the world's a safer place without Israel? A hundred percent. It's not you, even close. Base. Okay, tell me why. Why very, do you give me an nice. argument otherwise? Please. Please. Yes. Give, give me one argument why the world would be better off with Israel. <laughs> Let's just start with that. One thing. Give me one thing. Have you ever lived in the Middle East? No. I lived there for ten and a half years. That's okay. right. It's a very uh uh uh, it's it's not as like here. You you can sit here. You can be an atheist. You can be an agnostic. I can be a Christian. It can be a Jew. It can be an LDS, oh, you be Muslim. That. No problem. It's amazing. Can, so now he's going to take a war torn country and compare that to the United States, which experienced prosperity and peace. Of course, it's absolutely ridiculous. Because if you go to Saudi, if you go to the UAE, if you go to any first world Muslim country in this day and age, 
you will see prosperity, you will see peace, and you will see tolerance, of course. Take into consideration that in the United Arab Emirates, over 85% of people are actually migrants from India, America, and whatnot. Hindus, Christians, Jews, everybody lives together peacefully. I would say that it is what America wanted to be initially. You have true diversity, true multiculturalism, true diversity of religion, and they're all living together peacefully. But Patrick Bet David, who was a kid at the time, he spent his first 10 years in a war-torn country, wants to tell you that this is the Arab world, this is the Middle East, and only Israel is here to save you all and to give you democracy, LGBTQ rights, and peace. Uh, it's, it's not as like here, you, you can sit here, you can be an atheist, you can be an agnostic, I can be a Christian, it can be a Jew, it can be an LDS, Muslim, no problem. We can coexist here. You can do that in Israel. You can do that. Uh, not can really, you? Not yes. apartheid right now. <laughs> not, so that's, not, not, everybody's not living equally. Not at the exactly, level of Iran. Taliban. Not of the level of Iran. Dude, you're picking one totalitarian Shia country, which if you look into, you could argue, of course, that there are certain ties with Israel. But this is a longer topic that we don't want to get into here on this channel either. But the point of the story is, of course, why do you pick Iran. Why don't you pick any other Muslim country in the Middle East, such as, as I already mentioned, Saudi Arabia, UAE, etc. Because then you couldn't make this argument. Those countries already surpassed you. When it comes down to crime, we don't even have to talk about this. It's not even a comparison at all. America is failing its own citizens. When it comes down to healthcare, to the social environment, etc., etc., you name it, those countries are far ahead. Not at the level of what Iran is doing. I mean, in Iran, if you're thinking what Israel is doing out of control, do you know how much money Khamenei's families made? Do you know how much money they've taken? They have 200. What does that have to do with anything? I've been to Dubai, I've been to Saudi, like I've been to UAE. So like, and and they're all Muslim. They seem to be operating fine. I would would say Iran is slightly different than, but go back to it. So, okay. So you think yeah, okay, the Middle let's East not the address that be a at all. place if Israel right? didn't exist? Who cares? Yes. Iran, okay. though. Israel's Iran. committed, you know, so many terrorist attacks. They, they're stealing land right now. They're operating in apartheid. Um, they're currently committing a genocide on Palestinians. Like, do you believe in the genocide they're committing? I, I, I think they're fighting for themselves and they're defending themselves. Do you, you think that's defense? Wow. Well, when when, when, when 1,200 people died, sure, yeah, of sure. which the 1,200 you've killed and admitted that right. you've killed a lot during you know, your well, handle. I will tell you this. I will tell you this. Uh, the part Listen, I question real where people who are Jewish can't stand when I say this, I don't know how you, Netanyahu, claim you have the best intelligence in the world, Mossad, and you didn't know that on October 7th they were attacking you. They knew about you. it. They, didn't, they, they wanted it to happen, so well, they had the a reason CIA to take them, that. Yeah, yeah they, they wanted a reason to take the exactly. land. I totally get and it. And they killed their own citizens. But and, I, and they claimed that all these oof. people got raped. That was bullshit. They claimed beheaded babies. That was bullshit. Everything that they said was a fucking complete. Not only was it a lie, but they committed all those atrocities themselves to the Palestinians and been caught doing it. In fact, they just got caught gang raping Palestinians. You know, how many babies have they killed? All the things right. that yes. they accuse right. the Palestinians of or Hamas of or whatever, speaking they are guilty of a hundredfold themselves. So so you And they've been doing that. Like October seventh wasn't the start of this. Like the start of this was knock, but they've done so many I don't dear- disagree. Yeah, I don't disagree. Yeah, so I mean this is I not like disagree, it's not like I'm October seventh is either. like it's all of a sudden they just came over there unsolicited and just killed people. Like they had been killing Palestinians for years and years, operating two sets of justice. You know, it's like they have the justice for the Palestinians, the justice for the Israelis. And if you read yes. the Talmud, like, you know, if you're not Jewish, Ooh. you're basically not a human. You're like, you know, like cattle. If 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 a, if a Jew knows. Is, you know, is is killed by, you know, somebody that's not Jewish, then it's the death penalty. If a Jew kills somebody that's not a Jew, <laughs> then you know, you can't kill them. It's not the death penalty. Like they they literally like segregate in their Bibles. They're they, very protective exactly. of themselves. I don't think I don't yeah. think very protective can of that. themselves. So yeah, we very discreetly mentioned those Talmudic passages here as well, which is quite interesting because if you look into it, it is an ethnocentric religion. If you want to call it that people always attack islam oh the muslims they say you're a disbeliever yada 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 but islam is a creed of monotheism it's not a creed of race if you agree that there is only one god worthy of worship and that prophet muhammad may peace be upon him is his messenger then you are a muslim that's pretty much it then you enter into the fold of islam and that means anybody can do it white, black, Asian, it does not matter. 
anybody is welcome but try that with Judaism. I don't think it's a... Well, it's it's not the... Pro the problem isn't that they're protecting themselves. The problem comes Cosmos. when you think that you're better than other people and you think it's okay to lie to anybody that's not a Jew. You think it's okay to steal from people that are not a Jew. You, you have two sets of standards. The problem with that is mm -hmm. it allows Amazing, you to rationalize man. anything, right? And human beings are generally self-serving creatures. So sure. if your fundamental religious belief system allows yeah. you to operate in such a way that you believe there isn't consequences to stealing from other people, killing other people, you know, raping, you know, kids that are under nine years old, like if you think those things are okay, then, you know, how are you going to operate? Because to me, like my moral like code said. keeps me on track. I don't right? think I don't think that's what it is. I don't think it's <laughs> no uh, because Let's you, not give you're any saying it one sided. You're okay. not telling the other side of the story of what they're doing either. You're not saying what Hamas did. You're not saying what they did. What okay, that's absolutely ridiculous. And this, of course, leads us to assume that Patrick Bet David is indeed a shill for Israel directly, indirectly. He's diverting the question, talking about that you see it one sidedly. Now we are just talking about the religion, the Talmudic religion of Judaism and what it entails, what the goy is, what kind of standard he or she has in comparison to a Jew. The non-Jew is lesser than an animal. For example, in the Talmud, Baba Mezia 114b, we read, the Jews are called human beings, but the non-Jews, the Goyim, are not humans. They are beasts. And of course, there are many more passages like this. We already listed them in previous videos. Ultimately, it boils down to that the non-Jew will always be a second-class citizen, even though that is already very, very positively put. He will be less than an animal. Uh, because you, you're saying it one-sided. You're not telling the other side of the story of what they're doing either. You're not saying what Hamas did. You're not saying what they did. What did Hamas do? Uh, has nothing I mean, to do with it. from day one, when you see the rapes and the videos, we've all seen it. This isn't something well, that yeah, we rapes videos. and videos. But Stay which on videos? this year if you want to continue well, with no, this. No, no, but what, what which videos? videos? But, but my concern when you're saying Israel's doing it, you're saying wow, the other side isn't man, doing anything. Look at no, this but Hamas, no, no, I, there was no rapes during October 7th. They've, they've, they've shown no rapes from October 7th. They showed no beheaded babies. All that was all I'll, bullshit. I'll send you stuff. No, no, there's plenty of stories. That, it's not I'll all of them. The, is, the Israeli articles that I saw recently said that the, there was only two babies killed. One was shot by a bullet and the other one died in the hospital. There was no babies in ovens. There was no beheaded babies. All that was all bullshit. Shit. The, the big, yes. the big, okay, so go back to the part when you said they think they're uh, better than you. you believe that Jews think they're better than everybody else. It says it in their Bible. Okay, but you believe they're better than everybody else. Okay. I, I didn't say they're better than everybody else. They think. According to their scripture. Okay. But what if... What? And, and if you look at how they operate, right? Like they literally caught people raping Palestinian prisoners and yes. there was riots. Just a few but weeks the riots ago. weren't because they were raping the prisoners. The riots were because they felt like they had the right to rape the fucking prisoners. That's why they yep. almost had a fucking civil war, because they felt like they had the right to rape these prisoners. They felt like that was OK because yeah. they weren't Jewish. So, you know, when you have a society that operates like that, you're going to have fucking problems. And they're not the fucking most moral army. That's all fucking bullshit. And, you know, everything that they say, it's just like almost like, listen, when somebody lies to me, like if you lie to me, I'm not probably going to trust does. you again. You lie to me a second time. I'm definitely not going to trust you. You lied to me a third time, and I let you lie to me the third time. I'm the fucking idiot. These yep. motherfuckers have lied like 10,000 times. So, like, I don't believe anything <laughs> yeah, they say anymore. I, I, I think I, I come from a place of, as well. I don't, want, <laughs> I don't sit here expecting you to tell me 100% the truth. I don't sit here thinking, yeah, Dan's going to tell me 100% the truth with whatever he has in his life. Oh, I don't expect wow. that from me because I don't expect people to walk on water. That's not my Businessman, very good businessman. Absolute business move here, of course, because he tries to reestablish trust by saying indirectly to him, hey, we're all lying and we are all humans, don't you see? So therefore, I'm not expecting perfection of anybody here. This is just what humans do, but without pointing the finger to himself and actually admitting that he lies. So like this, he doesn't have to lie about lying. Very smart. I don't sit here expecting you to tell me 100% the truth. I don't sit here thinking, yeah, Dan's going to tell me 100% the truth with whatever he has in his life. I don't expect that from me because I don't expect don't people expect to walk this. on water. That's not my oh, expectation. I'm going to live is, my yeah. life. I'm going to live <laughs> with my on life. Walking on water, telling you, the truth. You can't think Same. that China's going to tell us the truth or Iran tells us the truth. 
or wow. U.S. tells everybody the truth, or you think any country is going to tell us 100% the truth. Dude, you're yeah, having an honest talk there, I got no? a different moral code. Like in, in gambling, nice. it's not about it, you will, but in gambling code. and business, like with my friend group, like you lie to, you lie one time, you welch on a debt, you do one you're thing. You're friendship, though. The, 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 I'm just saying my friends, possible. people that I know, to people that I do business it's with, very, people I gamble with. Like It's the same thing I have as well. It's the same thing most people have. That, that um, There's a difference between on the personal side than on the countryside. So you're America first. Is it fair to say you're America yes. first? Okay. How do you feel about the protesting and the rioting going on in schools, academia, Harvard, you know, Columbia, when you've seen all the stuff that's going on, free Palestine, you know, gays for Gaza. When you see that, what do you think about it? Does it do anything to you or you're like, let me support them? I, I mean, I think it's pretty funny that it wasn't a problem until it was against Israel. It wasn't a problem with BLM. It was fucking encouraged. It was BLM. always a problem. With Bullshit. They one. fucking encouraged it. They let them burn down police stations. Very there was good. no For repercussions. Me, nah, I'm not talking to me. No, no, I, I'm talking about yeah. our government, our media encouraged that shit. Right. They encouraged it when it was yes. BLM. Like they, they literally bait. burnt down police stations and it, and it was fine. The, the mayor came out and was like, you know, no problem. No mm. arrests. No big deal. We don't Defund the police. Right. Take down statues, destroy buildings, burn cop cars, do whatever you want to do. But the Loot. moment it was Israel. Now, all of a sudden, why do you think students okay get that? the shit beat out of them? They get arrested. They get pepper sprayed. They get fucking yep. maced. And those are peaceful protests. BLM was not peaceful. But it was fine because it wasn't criticizing Israel. What does that tell you? What? Let me ask you a question. Well, <laughs> we'll answer that. What does that tell you? Who's in charge here? But 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 you're talking to a guy but, but, that I'm not sitting here saying would be. I'm talking to you like you and I. I'm not talking to you with two three billion dollars of damage they did to small business owners in communities that African Americans are living in, and who controls mainstream media. And like, there's only. Two outlets right <laughs> now. We're talking to a couple of your friends here yeah. that were who during does lunchtime. Uh, we're having a conversation Patrick, while we're having dinner. Tell us. With who controls mainstream media? The left. The only one that's on the right is one. Okay. And that's also going to the left. The who left controls is CNN, media. CBS, ABC. Okay. That's left. Who controls sure. universities? Left. Who controls schools? Well, it's like 97 percent. Jewish. Right. So, I mean, so, we could say it loud, well, but it's okay, Jewish. Okay, he said it, man. He said honest. it. Not this video is really a breath of fresh air. It's amazing to listen to Dan because uh, those things, I can say in my Telegram group, I can say it on Discord, if I will. On that note, join in. It's free. But here on YouTube, I, with my reach, I cannot do such things. Otherwise, my channel is going to get deleted right away. Patrick Bad David, on the other hand, he can do it because he is in favor of Israel. He is very pro-Israel, you can see. And he is playing the devil's advocate here, questioning the very radical opinion of Dan. And Dan, who is this millionaire, this politically conservative playboy type of guy, he's not to be taken seriously anyways. He's a very extreme character and therefore we're just interviewing him. But by allowing this video, we get to hear the real opinion of Dan Blazarian, and this opinion is actually the truth. However, as I said, the majority of people here on YouTube, myself included, we cannot speak it out publicly like he just did. So therefore, yet again, kudos and respect to this man. Who controls mainstream media? The left. The only one that's on the right is one. Okay, and that's also going to the left. Who controls CNN, CBS, ABC? That's left. Who controls universities? Left. Who controls school? Well, it's like 97 percent Jewish. Right. So, I mean, so, we could say left, but it's Jewish if we're not, being honest. Not necessarily, because even no, right 100%. now, if you think about it, That's exactly if you think what about the right and the left, okay, who's taking he the tries biggest to make hit it about right with and losing left. Jewish voters? Classical conservative most Jews brain rot. Left. Has nothing They're to not do with voting it. on the right. Jewish vote is irrelevant. They're like 2% of the population. But the, money, cares. but the money that they vote with their money. <laughs> I yeah. mean, yeah, but like at the end of the day, I think how much money goes into these campaigns isn't going to dictate as oh, much as when you have a, you know, a president that's like potentially getting assassinated. Like yeah. those are the big the drivers. I mean, you know, Kamala Harris is a drunken school teacher. Like she can't even like formulate a coherent sentence. I mean, I, I don't know. The idea of voting for her just seems crazy. My biggest criticism of Trump is his support of Israel. I mean, aside from that, yes, I mean, finally supporting Thank Israel. you, Because of money. That's why they all fucking support but, but Israel. You said, money. Well, you said it's not about money a minute ago. Well, he In wants money. Votes. I mean, these politicians are right. I mean, there's there's two reasons to run for president. Right. Because you're a good person and oh. you want to do good. Okay. Or because you want fucking money. Sure. And fame. That's it. It's the only reason so somebody would join president. a good person, or you, you want, want money, money and fame. And fame. That's it. Two reasons why you run. Why else would you why run? Why do you think president? Trump's reason is? Money and fame. You think he wants money and fame? 100%. 
You think Trump's running because he wants money? In front? 100%. He has you money. He, is Trump is he wants Jesus? people to love him. He wants attention. I mean, he was doing like reality shows for Christ's sakes. Like he wants more money. <laughs> I, I totally sure. get it. But you think he is, he is more, you, you know, he is, how much you think it matters for Trump to be liked? I think he wants people to like him. Okay. Yeah. So if that's the case, he should have never ran because ever since he ran, people don't like him. That's I get it. Weird. Well, I mean, but that's the fame is like that. I mean, fame is polarizing. Yeah, like, you know, I mean, there's, there's no, very few people that become famous and you have don't a big hate them. I mean, it comes with the If like, you want to be loved, you're going to be hated as well. It's just, that's the way 2014, he could have been invited to Beyonce and Jay-Z's party in 2014. And in 2014, he would have been invited to, you know, uh, uh, N, you know, what, NAACP in 20. He, he went to everything. So it's more but, than one thing to be invited to parties, another thing that international no, status and, the, and legacy that. and, you the know, girls, man. I mean, so the reason why I brought the money is that with Jews. So who do you think the recent event with October 7th hurt more, the left or the right politically? October 7th? What do you mean? Israel Hamas, like this whole back and forth. Which political party do you think has lost more, you know, taken a bigger hit with their position they've taken with the Jews? I mean, they're both pro-Israel. So I, I don't think it's like I don't think it's a left against the Israel right when it comes to, to Israel. And and that's like what people think is like, but it's just a distraction. Like they're both pro-Israel. The guy's incredibly both, based. I mean, fucking Biden's giving Israel shitloads of money. Like, what do you yes. what do you mean? Trump's going to give shitloads of money. Trump's going to fucking go to war with Iran. What are you talking about? They're both fucking. You think Trump's going to go to war with Iran? He said he's going to. No, it's his way of saying to not go to war. He, he said puts he's a, going to he puts, <laughs> the same way he said with everybody else chess. that he was going to push them. At I this point, Dan Bilzerian surely lost all the respect for Patrick Bet David. He must think, man, I'm sitting in front of an idiot. It happened. He said, I mean, real. I don't know. I, I feel like he said that he was going to. So then let me ask you. So who would you vote for today? It doesn't sound like you're voting for anybody. I mean, if I had to choose between those two, Trump for sure. Sure. Understandable. I don't even think it's close. I mean, Kamala's half a fucking retard. <laughs> and she pushes, you know, all this woke left ideology. This is nonsense. Like, I mean, she, she's a fucking complete moron. Not that Trump is like a super genius either, but like light yep. years past her. I mean, she's yep. probably, she was like one of the most hated people. Like how she even got the fucking nomination is beyond me. Like how they didn't give it a big mic is crazy. Like yep, you ever heard of, you're so funny. All right. And we're going to cut off the Israel debate here. We're going to jump to another segment of the video. As already said, it is incredibly based, potentially too based for YouTube after all. Now we're gonna check out Dan Bilzerian speaking about Islam and potentially reading the Quran. And it just, man, it was not the answer. The weed was not the answer. We ended up going to nicotine and that did well, but the process of doing it was kind of like an amplification of everything that I'd done before. I kind of like just raised the bar on all of it. And um, it was fun, you know, but I just, the pleasure seeking has ends, you know, like it's, you know, it's, it's like a drug, you know, like you can only eat so much Percocet and then you got to eat more Percocet to get the same feeling. Then eventually you have to take it and not feel like shit. And pleasure seeking is, is similar. I think, you know, when you chase money or you chase pussy or you chase all these things and there's not really like an end. Um, I think you come to realize that, you know, it's just not the, you know, it's just not the final answer to happiness. You know, it's like, it's temporary stuff. It's fun. It's something that every guy should do to a point, but like, you know, not like you have to know where the guy was doing it till he was fucking 90, like surrounded by some retard that didn't even want to have sex with him. You know, like that, yeah. I saw that and I was yeah. just like, man, like, I don't want to do that. Now, yeah, and we have two passages about this in the Quran. I'm paraphrasing, of course. The first one says, have you seen the man that has taken his own desires as a God? And the other passage says that if you do not remember God, you will surely have a depressed life. So ultimately, this shows you the recipe of a happy life. Because instead of chasing the desires, you should chase communion with God. You should chase closeness to God. Because only in the remembrance of God, you will find peace. You will find rest. That is the third passage of the Quran. So there you have the recipe for a beautiful, wholesome life. While you're going through this process that you're going through, like, you know, kind of changing some of the ways you're living, is faith played any role in you? Are you like thinking God at all? Are you going through that at all? Or no, n nothing that... It's Not the traditional like, sense. Like, I, I don't believe in like, you know, going to the church and, and worshiping and doing all that stuff. To me, the idea of a like God that's up there that is requiring everybody to worship him seems a little strange. Yeah, and I would absolutely agree with that. This is why I accepted Islam, alhamdulillah. 
ultimately God is free of need. So God doesn't have any need for your worship. He is already perfect no matter what you do. The prayer, on the other hand, Islamically speaking, has been ordained to the believers, to the Muslims, for them. So it's something good for you. In this day and age, for example, many people do meditation, yoga, cold baths and whatnot. And they do understand that this is something that they see as a benefit for themselves. You could argue, of course, against it. But nevertheless, I'm just using this as an example. And the same applies to the prayer. The prayer has been ordained, religiously speaking, for us. It is not for God. He doesn't need our prayer whatsoever because Islamically speaking, as I said, he is free of need. I'm saying it's not, you know, okay, it's not shitting on people's religion, but it just, I don't know, to me, the more successful people are, or like, you know, the better a fighter is, the less he needs everybody to tell him how great he is, you know? And I feel exactly. like if you were God, would you really need everybody to worship you all the time and tell you how great no, you, you are? No, you don't. Doesn't seem to, cor you know, correlate with the experience that I've had. I feel like everybody knows what the right thing is to do and just do the fucking right thing. Like, that's my religion. Do the fucking right thing. Yeah, this is, of course, very problematic because he has many, many good takes, as we just heard him speak about Isra. But when it comes down to other social dynamics, for example, we, from a religious perspective, would see that as very problematic, of course. For example, promiscuity, hooking up with many, many women, alcohol, weed, and what not. Therefore, the question becomes, of course, how do you know that this is the right thing? You might think that it is the right thing, but is it truly? And this is where we enter into moral subjectivism, where everybody thinks they're doing the right thing. Patrick B. David was talking about the right and the left. The right thinks they're doing the right thing. The left thinks that they are doing the right thing. And the same applies to Israel as well. They believe that they are doing the right thing. So therefore, how do we establish what is right and wrong? And this is where religion comes into place because now we have an objective standard that determines what is right and wrong. You know what it is, you know, like, I mean, everybody's kind of got their confidence on share of sociopath or something like that. Like, so just I was do the, the right thing and, you know, know, don't fuck people over, you know, treat others as you want to be treated. You know, I think there's a lot of knowledge in the Bible. I think there's a lot of good quotes in there. Um, sure. But as far as like traditional mainstream religion, I'm not, you know, if I were to be anything, maybe Christian. You know, I, I like the Muslims. I mean, I think that they have a pretty peaceful religion. They get a really bad rap in the media. Um, but I've met a lot of Muslims and they're, you know, pretty morally sound for the most part. So yep. you would consider being a Muslim? I don't know enough about their religion. I, I think I'm going to probably read the Quran. So more to just understand it. I'm not really looking for like a mainstream religion to join, but is there, uh, is there this guy? I don't know if you know him or not. This guy named Andrew Tate. Do you at all talk yeah. to this guy? Yeah, we're friends. Yeah. I'm obviously being sarcastic. I know you guys have okay. and he spent time with you. Yeah, but yeah. obviously he went from, you know, being a Christian to being a Muslim. Yep. And now he's pretty loud about it. Does he have any influence mm, with really. reading the Quran or not really? A little bit. Okay. You know, I mean, he's a smart guy. He's a pretty smart, well-read guy. So I don't think he would take that decision lightly. Um, He's probably done the research, you know? I, I don't know. He hasn't converted his brother, so I guess his case isn't that strong, but I don't know. I mean, like I said, I think you know, there's nothing wrong that with strong. learning. His I mean, understanding arguments. where people are coming from or what they believe in, I think it's always good, so. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. It is long enough as it is, and I said everything that I could potentially say here on this channel. If you liked it, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. Thank you very much for that. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. Ya nafsu illam tadfari la tajzai